Hello my friends, it's good to see you again. Uh, pardon me while I adjust the camera here to get it just right. And then I'm going to have to take my seat. Uh, oh. oh. Yeah. I might have to adjust the camera again. Let me look and see what we did. This is kind of tight trying to get into here and uh, be able to show you what I'm doing. Um, as I do it and talk to you about it. All right, let's see if we can avoid hitting the tripod this time. Hey, all right, I think we did it, yay. Okay, today what we're gonna do is talk and I'm gonna show you some examples about the flesh uh, colors. Um, there is a lot of things to think about when you paint somebody. Uh, a lot of people keep it very simple and they mix up a basic color and they make a, a light version of it then they make a dark version and uh, they just go with those three basic colors. If you look at a lot of illustration these days uh, it's done pretty much like that. Uh, you very rarely see an illustrator go to a lot more trouble than just basically using um, primary uh, you know, a few values in the flesh tones uh, you know the really talented ones uh, you know they try to expand it more or whatever but since we're learning to be artists instead of illustrators here um, one of the first things you need to know about painting flesh is that it, a lot of its common sense and just think about it and it'll all come to you but when you paint the flesh, you have warm spots and you have cold spots. For instance, what I mean is this. If you're painting a spot, say like here on the cheeks, okay, there's a lot of muscle under there. So any place that there's muscle underneath the skin is always going to be more of a reddish color. Okay. All right. Now, if you're painting an area to where the skin is just barely on top of cartilage or bone and there isn't any muscle underneath it uh, you're going to see a lot more of a greenish color in it um, and I'll show you how to apply that in just a moment uh, and also when you paint men you have to take into account that they have that five o'clock shadow thing going I, I don't care if they even just shaved uh, it still shows through on their skin uh, so you want to make sure that you address that as well. All these things make the, the painting much more believable and the, fe the flesh believable. I think one of the things Daniel, he told me was that uh, the greatest, one of the greatest accomplishments you could make as an artist is to breathe life into the painting. Now to do that, you have to learn these things and how to do them and that's what gives the flesh the look that it's believable and stuff. Uh, on women, uh, you approach it a little bit different and later on when we use a, a woman model, we'll go over it, but I'll tell you now and things. I, I'll, I'll go over things with you several times just so you, uh, you know, I'm one of the people I believe that uh, uh, repetition is the key to learning. Uh, you know, you keep doing something enough, it'll eventually stick. So sometimes I might talk about something you've already heard me talk about, but I'm doing that just to make sure that it stays in your mind because it's important. Uh, as most of you know, this is uh, a painting of Mark Forner. It's a portrait of him. Uh, he's the former lead singer, guitar player, and songwriter of Grand Funk Railroad, one of my favorite all-time bands. Uh, when I was a kid, you know, this was he was my idol basically, you know. So. Doing this painting of him is a real thrill for me, uh, and, and there's a lot more that goes with that, which I'll you know tell everybody about later, um, and, and things. But anyway, so let, let me show you a quick little example of something. Now this is I'm going to show you the one reason that I really love to paint on canvas. Okay, is you can see the texture is real rough. Okay, it's not smooth. Now I used to be terrified of that when I was an illustrator. I kept thinking, man, how am I going to get a straight line? or anything with such a rough texture, right? Well, you know, as you improve and your skills improve and your confidence 
And, and that's the key right there, your confidence. Um, you know, I by no means know everything, and I by no means am a master, and I am by no means, you know, uh, you know, there are a lot of people out there that are a lot more, uh, you know, uh, capable of teaching you than I am, but uh, some of them, they're not doing that, so, uh, you know, I'm just doing what I can to help those that are interested, but, um, you know, um, oh, hell, I done lost my train of thought now. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> but anyways, um, uh, oh, heck, I hate that. Uh, I'm only 54 and I'm already having brain farts is what we call them down south. Of course, I live up north now in Michigan. Okay, but anyways, I'm going to uh, show you all oh, the texture. That's right. But I'm going to show you how this works. Okay, on my palette, I've added sap green. Now, sap green is the color, if you look at the back of your hand, you know, and you look real good, you'll see the blood vessels and things through it. And basically, you know, a sap green will do that. And the reason you see them blood vessels is because there's no muscle, there's no cartilage. Basically, underneath that is cartilage, but these vessels sit on top of it. So there's nothing really between the blood vessels and the skin. So that green is going to show through. Okay, and it's the same way, like around the eyes, there's very little muscle and stuff. So I start out, I'll take a little sap green, and this isn't really going to show that much in the finished painting, but I'll explain to you as we go why we're doing it here and at this point. Uh, you don't want to do it later. You can, but you don't want to, because when you paint with oils, you're painting in transparent layers. So like tomorrow when I actually start putting the flesh colored paint on Mark's face here, this green will be partially dry and the other paints will go over top of it. So the green will breathe through the paint like it does in your skin. Okay? So basically so what I'm doing, and it doesn't matter if you miss a spot or don't get it right or whatever, because this is still the preliminary part of it. So, Basically, the point is to go around and cover the areas. I'm not going to do the whole thing uh, right now because it would be just a long, boring video. I'm just trying to give you an idea. But you see how the paint comes off my brush and you hear it scrubbing? You hear that? It's just scrubbing on there. You can see the thing. That is that is really nice. And once you get the hang of that, you can really get some awesome effects with the brush and the paint together. Okay? Um, up here, you might have a little bit kind of thing okay so you want to cover the areas up here in the forehead you're always going to you know there's not much muscle uh, it's mostly skin over cartilage or bone okay around the eye the eye sockets the same way all right and then down the sides of the nose go like that okay all right now other places you might see it would be like right above the lip here um, and possibly around this area here okay like I said we're not going to go into great detail now I will take photographs of this once I've got it done and place it on my Facebook fan page so you can go there and see what the actual finished version of what I'm doing right now will look like okay that'll help you a lot if you're not part of that fan page or like page there's a link uh, you just have to look for it there on YouTube that'll take you there okay uh, and I've got it set up to where anybody can go uh, so you, I don't I don't even know if you have to join Facebook if you're not a Facebook member to get to it I think you can do it without that okay but alright the second color I use in this is cobalt blue no I'm sorry that's wrong not cobalt blue I use cerulean blue uh, a friend of mine was telling me that he used cobalt blue and that's why that was sticking in my head like that uh, sorry, so it's cerulean blue is what I use, I like. Okay, and what I do with the cerulean blue is the places where you know that there's going to be uh, hair, facial hair, even shaved, you know, you use that and you go around and blend it into the canvas. And stuff, you can hear me scrubbing and working. And, you know, if it gets too thick, you just take a little off and you come over and bring it somewhere else and... Just work on scrubbing it in, like so, and 
keep at it until you've got all the areas covered to where the facial hair would be. Okay? Alright, now. I just love that sound. I don't know why. But, <laughs> but it's really nice. I, I can't believe I've never painted on canvas for all these years. And here this last year I found canvas and I'm totally in love with it. Uh, one of my greatest heroes of inspiration is Frank Frazetta. And I think the biggest majority of his work that he did was on canvas. But uh, seeing some photographs of the originals, I've never had the pleasure of actually seeing any of the originals. It looks like he painted on canvas boards, uh, you know, which they were actually less expensive than, uh, you know, a canvas like this. Uh, but, uh, you know, I don't know, I need to do some research on that, but the man was a totally probably, uh, he, he actually is the reason I started painting. As a young artist, my ambition was to be a comic book artist. That's all I wanted to do. I wanted to draw Spider-Man. Uh, I was crazy about Spider-Man. lived and breathed him. Just like I did Grand Funk Road. Uh, <laughs> so, but then when I was, I, I didn't actually go to an art school. I went to a community college. And while I was going to the community college, I went by the bookstore one day and I saw the very first Frank Zetta collection art book. Uh, this was back in 1978, I believe. And I bought the book and I was just absolutely amazed and blown away. And from that point, I decided I want to paint because that is just so extraordinary. I mean, you know, it just uh, opened my mind up and just looking at his work. So if you get a chance and you're not real familiar with Frank Frazetta, then I really highly recommend you look his work up, buy a book and study it because he will inspire you uh, greatly. He's inspired a whole generation of artists. Uh, fantasy and art is what it is today because of Frank Frazetta. That stuff. So anyways, you just keep doing this. Um, and next time we do a video on an underpainting, I will show you how to actually start adding in the flesh colors like you've seen me do here on the shirt and stuff. Uh, can't do it all at once because the videos would be too long and they'd be too boring. So anyways, to see what this is going to look like before uh, I actually start putting paint on it, uh, it may actually show up in the next video, I don't know, but definitely go to my Facebook like page uh, and you, you'll be able to see it there. Uh, and if you're, be, please be kind and hit the like button while you're there and uh, follow it. But uh, uh, so that's it. You start with the cold colors, okay? And they're going to show up through the warm colors later as the painting progresses. Like I say, you're going to see the painting pretty much from start to finish as I do each thing. Uh, I may even do another video later today, possibly. Uh, I'll just have to see how things go. Uh, I, I, I'll always think I can do more than I can, and then it turns out I can't, then I get disappointed in myself for not being able to. But anyway, so, uh, so anyway, study up on this. Use your common sense, think about it. When you're painting a person, Remember that where the flesh is just overlaying on top of the cartilage or the bone, it's going to be cold in nature. So that's where you would add the green. And on a man around where the beard area is, you want to add the cobalt blue. Uh, and that really gives a nice effect. For those of y'all that see the portrait I did of myself uh, here a few months ago, if you look at it real good, you can tell that I did this in the painting and it shows through. And it, you know, it shows that I have, you know, like that nice uh, five o'clock beard. It gives it a much more believable look, okay? Uh, if you haven't seen it, you can see that on my light page uh, as well. But uh, anyway, so thank you. Uh, love everybody. Um, Y'all take care and happy painting. Talk to you soon.